Welcome to World Building Notes. In this episode, the Great Itlu Spelling Reform. Back in the young and innocent days of Itlu, not in the real world, but within the fictional river basin, where it's spoken by its fictional native speakers, syllables were simple. Each syllable could be either only a vowel or a consonant followed by a vowel. There were no consonant clusters and no coders. And so the language had words such as ama, epata, lomewa, emewata, matenalose, and so on. The writing system that emerged over the centuries was a syllabary, perfectly suited to a language that had a very small number of possible syllables. To write ama, just write a and ma. To write epata, just write e, pa, and ta. It was entirely straightforward, and everybody had a great time spelling things in this simple and easy-to-learn system. Until it all broke. The old language had a system of primary and secondary stress. Primary stress always fell on the first syllable, while secondary stress fell on the following odd-numbered syllables. And the thing that often happens to vowels in unstressed syllables in many languages is that they become reduced to schwa. And so ama became ame, epata became epeta, lomewa became lomewa, and so on and so forth. And those reduced vowels can then disappear. In English, words like disturbed and loved once were pronounced with that final vowel, disturbed and loved, but then it disappeared. In Itlu, all the vowels that had reduced to schwa simply disappeared, except word finally, where the schwa still clings on, at least in the prestige dialect. Suddenly, the language had consonant clusters, but the syllabary had no way to deal with those. People could have solved this problem by throwing in echo vowels. Need to write lomwa? Just write lomowa. And people will know that they need to ignore that O that comes with the second character, because there is no such word as Lomowa, but Lomowa does exist. Or to make it all less guesswork, they could have invented a marker showing that the vowel in the preceding character is silent. But by and large, people chose to not do anything at all. There were old texts around where Lomowa was still spelled as Lomewa, and epta was still epata, and ame was still ama. So people stuck to the conservative spellings, and one pretty much had to memorize how to write every word. But that wasn't the entire story. The great vowel disappearance also made consonants jump all over the place. In all the resulting consonant clusters, the consonants shifted to align with the sonority hierarchy, because the language still liked its nice open syllables of increasing sonority. And so, as a little Itlu child, you know that the word for river is achla, but you have to spell it as aleha. Why? Because the old books say so. And with some words, it was worse. The old word for tool, method, idea was limana. But through a series of various language change circumstances, it became anlene. But the word still had to be spelled limana. In the same vein, oxoze was spelled kesosa and ule was spelled la. Memorizing the unpredictable spellings of thousands upon thousands of words is not very fun, though, and people were often failing at spelling things right anyway. So the head nuns running the 21 monasteries of the land gathered together to fix the issue once and for all. After much deliberation, they scrapped all the conservative spellings and introduced this set of additional characters. Write one above a character from the old syllabary, and it adds a consonant sound before it. Now consonant clusters can be written down. They also decided that the word final schwa will be written as if it were e, because e had disappeared from the ends of words anyway, and now had a mutually exclusive distribution with e. So when readers find e at the end of a word, they will know exactly what's going on. And so ame is now written with a and me. Finally, there was the issue of h, which had, in the meantime, turned into a glottal stop between vowels. It happened in all words across the entire language, so the nuns decided that a glottal stop plus the schwa will be spelled as h, as it was a very easy rule to learn. 
and so the new and improved way of spelling the language came into use in the monasteries, and then filtered down to the rest of the literate population, and the system is simple and easy to learn once again.